This gameplay video may contain mature content such as death, torture, gore, blood, nudity, sexual situations, bad language, drug use, and other things that may be considered offensive. I don't personally endorse these activities. It's just a game. like yours before. Then again, I haven't seen any ships before you arrived. We've got strict rules around here, but they're strict for a reason. Constant is a peaceful ship. Don't change that. threats coming from outside our ship. Just because our equipment's old, doesn't mean it won't work to take down the It definitely takes a special type of person to live their entire life, birth to death, aboard a single ship yes. traveling through space. These are exciting times, aren't they? I have lived my entire life in the Constant. I'm not sure how else to live. beyond our little community. It definitely takes a special type of person to live their entire life, birth to death, aboard.
a single ship traveling through space. Hmm. Sure it is nice to know there are other people out there. Wow. I heard about you, but here you are. Unless you or someone else needs my help, I can make time. Hello! You're the alien! Uh, the, uh, well, uh, person that came from out there, in space, that we weren't expecting at all. Sorry, I'm a little nervous. Uh, can we start this over? Yeah, yeah! Calming down! Here we go. <sighs> okay, sorry about that. I'm Abe. Levitz. Abe Levitz! I'm the cabin manager here, so if there's anything you need during your stay, I'm happy to accommodate. Please do, even if you just want to schmooze. Ah, glad you asked! I coordinate cabin maintenance, plan activities, even help settle domestic disputes. It's a demanding job, but in short, I'm here to keep people happy. I try to keep both the kids and adults entertained. Scavenger hunts, sing-alongs, fun little art projects, you name it. We also have regular media nights where our historian, Julia Yang, screens old movies, plays music, and exposes us to other Earth media. See you later, I hope. Wow. Hi. This time we thought we were alone.
boy, am I glad you weren't some sort of... alien or something. we know what's out there, things are going to be more interesting from here on out. more to learn about now. Hey there. I wonder what else is out there. I wonder, I wonder what it's like out there like beyond our little community. Careful waving that fancy gun around. You don't need to see what it can do. my entire life in the closet. Hydroponics, of course. This must be how the colony ship kept itself fed over all these years in space. Wow. I've heard about you. strict rules around here, but they're strict for a reason. We were never trained to address threats coming from outside our ship. Now that we know what's out there,
As we were landing, I picked up a message from Aja. She said to meet us at the park overlooking the ocean. Before we go to the ceremony, I want you to look me in the eyes and tell me this is exactly what you want. Ah, oh, I just melt when I hear you say things like that to me. I love you, and I'm forever thankful to have someone as amazing as you in my life. Now come on, Aja is waiting for us. But first, we should probably say something to my mother. No major incidents in a while. Let's hope it stays that way. Every day's nice around here. Oh, this looks like a lovely place for a stay. Might also be the perfect time to stop for some food or a tranquility. Where should we begin? Oh, hey. A customer. <sighs> Welcome to Paradiso Gift Shop and Convenience. Feel free to look around, but don't break anything or you've got to buy it. And before you ask, there aren't any discounts. So don't even try to ego with me. Why would I? I have to sell overpriced crap to rude, obnoxious tourists all day. My uncle works for the Paradiso board. When he said he could get me a job here, I expected an executive level job, not this. <sighs> but it's not all bad. I don't have to worry about getting fired, and I live in Paradiso for free. <laughs> Can I get you something, or are you going to keep asking questions about my life? Mm-hmm. That is what we do here. Sell things.
There you go. No one's going to care if I call out sick from work for another week, right? It certainly was nice of you to think of me when sending invitations to my daughter's wedding. It's good to see you too, Mum. I just wish you would have given me more notice. Or maybe some time to get to know your dear partner. I barely even know his name. Yes, good to meet you too, my dear. If only my daughter had thought to introduce us sooner. We could have built more of a rapport before this big day. We'll have plenty of time to talk more later, I'm sure, after the ceremony. Anyway, I'm sorry, Mum. I know how this must all seem to you. This was a sudden decision, and we didn't want to waste any more time. We wanted to keep the ceremony small, and involve only the people I care about the most. Sarah, dear... I hope you know that I am delighted to be here, to see you finally get married. It's been a long time coming, and I wouldn't miss it for the world. Thank you for coming, Mum. We'll be sure to talk more in a bit. But for now, let's not keep poor Aja waiting. We're waiting until everyone arrives. It's so lovely to see you, Sarah. It's wonderful to see you too, Aja. This is the one I told you about. I've heard a lot about you. All of it good. You're quite a catch. Ten seconds in and already you're embarrassing everyone. Before we go any further, I just want to make sure that you are right for Sarah. She's quite special, hmm? God, now you're embarrassing me. <laughs> That's called love, my dear. You better get used to it. Well, I've seen enough. I can read people the moment I lay eyes on them. And you, you're going to make Sarah quite happy. Coming from you, Aja, that means a lot. Of course, Sarah. You know I always look out for you. Now, are we ready to begin the ceremony? Very well. If everyone's ready, then I'll begin. It's been years since Sarah Morgan and I have spoken. And though it might appear that we've grown apart, I feel that we've become closer friends than ever before. When I received the message with Sarah's intent to marry, and that she wanted me to officiate the ceremony. <laughs> I was overwhelmed with joy. Not because she had decided to rekindle our friendship, but because she was allowing me to share the happiest moment of her life. I can't imagine a greater honor. And for that, Sarah, I thank you. I wouldn't have had it any other way, Aja. Before you present your vows, I'd ask both of you to remember that love is what brought you together today. It is a foundation upon which a structure of trust, faith, and affirmation is built. 
This structure can be absolutely impenetrable if you both agree to love each other unconditionally with faith, devotion, and acceptance. And most importantly, to allow yourself to be loved. Remember, there are no other bonds more meaningful than the one you are undertaking today. You should cherish this moment and hold it close to your hearts as a reminder of the love you share. If you both are willing to abide by these words, then you can be assured that your lives will be filled with joy and happiness forever. That was beautiful, Asha. Thank you. Did you need a moment, Sarah? No. No, I'm fine. But I wanted to say something before you continue. When we stood beside that waterfall in New Atlantis, you told me that I needed to forget the past and focus on what I have right now. I swear with every fiber of my being that the past will no longer be an obstacle in my life. And I will honor your words by focusing my affection on the most important thing in my life. You. This is my solemn pledge to you. From deep within my heart, from deep within my soul, for all eternity. And you? Did you have anything you wanted to say to Sarah? I know it will. I'm going to hold you to that promise. You had a gift, Sarah? Yes. I wanted you to have this as a token of our love. I'm giving this to you as a symbol of the clean break I've made from my past. Oh, it would have been impossible without your help. And for that, I'll be forever grateful. With these promises of affection and these vows you've exchanged, by the power vested in me by the Articles of Constellation, I happily pronounce you life mates. Congratulations! Aja, I don't know what to say. That was... Oh, amazing. <laughs> I couldn't imagine having the ceremony without you. I'm glad everything worked out for you, Sarah. I'm only sorry that we waited so long to reach out and contact one another. You better. Otherwise, I'd have to come out of retirement and hunt you down. <laughs> well, you're both welcome to stay here for as long as you like. Sarah, your mother will be staying here with me for a few weeks. We've actually got a lot more in common than I expected. So, I guess this is goodbye for now. I wish the both of you a happy and healthy life together. I'll never forget this, Aja. Thank you. Don't worry. I know how you can be. I'll try to work on her for you and Sarah. I'm here for you, my love. Hmm, what's on your mind? You have no idea how badly I needed to hear those words. I love you. No, we done talking already. You and Sarah deserve someone special in her life. I'm glad she found you. It was not quite what I had imagined for Sarah. I thought it would be a grand affair with hundreds of friends and extended family gathered to celebrate. But 
Given her history, I should say I'm not entirely surprised she chose something completely different. <laughs> However, despite that, I must say that this was truly something special. It was quite splendid. Just the two of you, myself, and Aja. From the bottom of my heart, thank you again for having me. Oh, gosh, really? Uh, we're doing this, are we? Oh, can I? When Sarah was six, I believe, she lost her second tooth. But this time, she actually lost it. I forget how it happened exactly, but it ended up going out with the waste as we were flying between Jemison and... Oh, I forget where. It's not important. She was so distraught. Mummy, what if the Tooth Fairy doesn't know I lost a tooth and doesn't come? <laughs> she cried. So I told her to write a note and leave it under her pillow for the Tooth Fairy. So she ended up explaining what had happened and begged the Tooth Fairy for a spaceship so she could go off and find her lost tooth for her. <laughs> it was adorable. Thanks, Mother. Just, oh, thanks for that. Mostly the physical distance between us. It wasn't intentional, I'll have you know. Our lives simply diverged as she grew older. You may not know this, but we had different plans for her when she was growing up. I've since come to terms and accepted that she didn't want to follow in her parents' footsteps. Perhaps... Hmm. She needs to hear it from me. I need to make it more clear to her that I'm proud of her, regardless of her choices. I need to, if I want to be closer to my daughter and her new partner. Bye then, dear. It was a wonderful wedding. I was so happy to officiate for you. I was chair of Constellation for 35 years. I was there for all the low points and all the high. I kept Constellation out of the colony war, made some incredible discoveries, and recruited some of the most amazing explorers in the settled systems. I just finally reached a point where I felt I'd done enough. And it was time to give Saba a chance. And I have no regrets either. If you're expecting controversy or some sort of political reason, I can assure you, it doesn't exist. And between you and me, I'm not getting any younger, eh? <laughs> And this tired old woman wanted to enjoy the sunset of her life on this beautiful world. You have to ask? Look at the place. It's absolute paradise. I can spend my day at the beach, relax with a cool drink and get up on some reading, enjoy the cuisine, whatever my heart desires. I haven't even traveled off world since I arrived. Hell, I haven't even boarded a spacecraft. It's so wonderfully liberating. Moving to Paradiso was one of the best decisions I made in my entire life. <laughs> she was a royal pain in the butt. That what she was. Hmm? Hot-headed, impulsive, eager to rush into things without examining the ramifications, eh? Honestly. A lot like I was at her age. <laughs> her hunger to explore the void was the most fervent I'd seen in my years at Constellation. There wasn't a single assignment she'd refuse. Only not though. She was one of the best explorers I've traveled with. And I'd wager that holds true up to today. That woman has a good head on her shoulders. You should count yourself lucky to be a part of her life. Goodbye now. <laughs>